Hi everyone, I'm Carolyn, and today I'll be presenting on the topic antibiotic resistance. This is a growing public health issue and needs urgent attention globally. It's an area that I'm extremely passionate about. Just a little bit more about myself. I'm a secondary four student from Singapore, which is equivalent to a sophomore. I have a strong passion for current health issues, and I hope to pursue a career in medicine. I have developed my passion in this area through heading my school's Modern United Nations Club, as well as conducting research projects. I've had the privilege of presenting my research work at platforms such as the Youth Science Conference and the Singapore Science and Engineering Fair. Currently, I'm working with Dr. Society to allow healthcare education to become more accessible. Bringing us back to the topic, in June, I participated in the Future Problem Solving Program International Conference which included brainstorming futuristic solutions, targeting antibiotic resistance, which sparked my interest in this area. Through my presentation, I hope to highlight to you why this modern day crisis has been deemed by the World Health Organization as one of the biggest threats to global health, food security, and development today, and share with you the causes and impact of antibiotic resistance on various fronts, as well as the roles of different stakeholders in tackling this issue. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, there are more than 2.8 million antibiotic resistant infections in the United States alone each year. Every year, more than 1 million people die globally due to infections caused by antibiotic resistant bacteria, and this number may reach 10 million annually by 2050. This figure is higher than deaths attributed to cancers. Why is this a global problem? It's global because the emergence and spread of drug-resistant pathogens is prevalent in every country, both developed and developing. Now, let's have a look at the underlying reasons which lead to antibiotic resistance. These include non-compliance, inappropriate prescriptions which include wrong indications, such as the use of antibiotics for viral infections, incorrect dosages, or durations inadequate diagnostics with a lack of clinical or laboratory tools to identify the infections for treatment. Scientists also believe that the practice of adding antibiotics to agricultural feeds promotes drug resistance. The underlying reasons for antibiotic resistance, misuse and overuse of antibiotics are universal globally. Despite carefully crafted guidelines in many senses, it is estimated that 30% of antibiotics prescribed are deemed unnecessary. This trend is seen globally, and the statistics are expected to be even more alarming in some other nations. Now, let's have a look at the impact of antibiotic resistance. It can be broadly categorized into health impact, economic impact, and social impact. Firstly, health impact. Besides being the treatment for infections arising from medical conditions such as pneumonia, antibiotics are also critical to prevent and combat infections for surgeries. Hence, antibiotic resistance results in higher risks of complications from surgical procedures such as cesarean sections, hip replacements, and organ transplantations. In fact, without effective antibiotics to prevent or treat infections, any success of modern and innovative medicine such as stem cell therapy and advanced transplant surgery would unfortunately become unsustainable. Besides higher morbidity and mortality, antibiotic resistance causes a tremendous financial strain on health systems globally. This is evident from many studies which report a huge financial burden related to longer admissions, more intensive care stay, and an expensive therapy to combat the infections. Besides, according to the O'Neill report, a cumulative 100 trillion US dollars of economic output will be at risk by 2050 if we do not put in place proactive solutions now. There are other devastating consequences. The Food and Agriculture Organization has reported that unless we address the issue urgently, there will be downstream impact with more people being forced into extreme poverty, hunger, and malnutrition. Based on the World Bank, an additional 24 million people will be forced into poverty by 2030, of which 18.7 million live in low-income countries. Low-income developing countries will be affected the most. Poverty drives antibiotic resistance, as people living in poverty are more vulnerable to antibiotic resistance and are also less able to prevent or treat antibiotic-resistant bacteria. Yet, 
the high cost of treating antibiotic resistance would push them into more severe poverty. What can be done to tackle this pressing crisis? Many stakeholders are involved. Patients, healthcare professionals, pharmaceutical industries, regulatory boards, and policymakers. The need of patients to exercise compliance is extremely important. A study from China showed that as high as 87% of patients show non-compliance to treatment. If a patient has to be on a long course of antibiotics, it is more likely that compliance can be compromised. Education is the only way to increase compliance rates among patients. Healthcare professionals play a very important role. Before prescribing antibiotics, these are the questions to ask. Are there alternatives? Will the prescribed antibiotics help? Is it the correct dosage and duration? How to prevent further occurrence of so as to reduce the need for antibiotics. Antibiotic stewardship programs can help clinicians improve clinical outcomes and minimize harms by improving antibiotic prescribing. What about the role of pharmaceutical industries? A major hurdle to successful new antibiotic development is that it's simply not cost-effective. The development process is costly and lengthy, and it may take up to 23 years for pharmaceutical companies to see a profit on their investment in new antibiotics. It is therefore very encouraging that the pharma industry launched a $1 billion initiative to develop new antibiotics. Regulation is key in tackling antibiotic resistance. It allows surveillance of antibiotic resistant infections, ensures that robust national action plans to tackle antibiotic resistance are in place, and can promote policy implementation by enabling right incentives and disincentives using legislative tools if needed. Regulatory boards and policy making can be local, regional, national, or international. The World Health Organization has adopted a global action plan, which urges concerted efforts across governments and different stakeholders. Each of the stakeholders has to play their crucial role well if we are to succeed in fighting this battle against antibiotic resistance. Here are my references if you would like to read out more. Thank you for listening. I'd like to thank GHRC for giving me this wonderful opportunity to share on this platform. If anyone has any questions, I'd like to discuss further, and please do not hesitate to reach out to me at my email here. Thank you.